Okay, fifth graders. So this is page 317. And uh, you've done these kinds of pages before. It shouldn't come as any surprise on how to do them. You're just simply matching the clues here and their letters, A, B, C, D, and so forth. And you're going to put the letters where they match. So maybe you think that's A, and this is C, and this is H. So that's really all you have to do. Um, and you'll have to start doing these problems to figure out which is which. So for example, if I did this one right here, 100 times 100, well, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. All you need to do is add zeros. It's going to be four zeros. And so it's a one and a zero followed by three more. The answer is 10,000. And then you'd look through the letters here. And here's one that says the product is exactly 10,000. So the letter G would go in that box right there. And that's how you do those. Let me scroll down a little bit. We're in the vocabulary review. You guys have done these kinds of pages before. Uh, much of it I don't have to explain, but there's a, a couple things I wanted to mention. And in particular, it's number five. It says a benchmark fraction. And a benchmark fraction, I don't think I've talked about that with you guys, and it, it must have been somewhere in, in chapter seven. A benchmark fraction is, it's usually a, a fraction that you would compare other fractions to. Or it's a fraction that you would commonly see on a ruler. You know how a ruler has a bunch of marks and then maybe a larger one, a bunch of marks and maybe a larger one. So benchmark fractions tend to be um, like one quarter. That'd be a benchmark fraction. One half would be a benchmark fraction. One third would be a benchmark fraction. What wouldn't be a benchmark fraction would be, let's say, uh, 2 seventeenths. Okay? But these three here in particular, one quarter, one half, one third, that's a safe bet. All those would be a benchmark fraction. So for an example, you can put any one of those or all three of them in there. In a non-example, you can kind of come up with your own or, or put down 2 seventeenths. I don't really care. And uh, let's see here. Then for number 8, 9, 10, 11, all you're doing is drawing a line that matches. If you think 8 is 29 over 24, then you would draw a line to that. I have no idea if it is or not, but that's how you would do those. So let's go to the next page. That is set A. I'm on page 319 now. And uh, for set A, it says, remember that you can use a number line to decide if a fraction is closest to 0, 1 half, or 1. This is what they're talking about right here, 0, 1 half, or 1. And it says to estimate each sum or difference. So notice some are subtraction and some are addition. And so what you would do simply is you'd look at this number line and the first number one here it's two-thirds. Well two-thirds is I don't know between zero and one it'd be oh I don't know maybe right about there. And then five-sixths is almost one and uh, if it was 6, 6, it would be 1, but it's 5, 6, so 5, 6 might be like right about here. And we're adding those two together. So uh, I think with my other class, I might have said 1, but it might be more accurate to say this would be 1 and 1 half. Okay. So uh, number, number 3 here, let's look at that. 1 eighth. Well, one-eighth is, 
right about there, so that's pretty close to zero. And then 1 16th would be even closer. So an estimate of those two added together would be zero. So that's what they want you to do with each one of these problems you're estimating. And you're using simply either a one or a half or a zero for each fraction. Set B down here. Uh, don't even worry about it. Just put a line through it. Next page, top of the page, set C. Um, let's see, it says remember to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number when writing an equivalent fraction. So I'll, um, I just want you to solve each one of these, one through seven here. And uh, I could pull out, uh, let's, maybe I could do number four here. So we have seven eighths and we're subtracting two thirds. Well, what's the common denominator? It's not eight. It's not going to be 16. Mr. Coggin, what do you think? 24. Yeah, 24. So three goes into 24 eight times. Eight times two is 16. Eight goes into 24 three times. And three times seven is 21. So now we add up 16 and 21. There's 21, there's 16. 37, I heard somebody say. So that's 37 over 20. Oh, we're subtracting. Whoops. Yeah, wait. Mr. Glazer needs to have more coffee. Yeah, I don't blame you. I was confused too. So 16 from uh, 21, that's going to be 5. So 5 over 24. Can that be reduced? No. No. So that would be your answer to number 4. Whoops. I erased part of the problem. Let's try that again here. I'll go from this direction. There we go. So uh, number, f was that number four I did? Yep. Yeah. Equals five over 24. All right. Um, and set D. Yeah, there you go. Don't even worry about it. Now, that's to page 320. So I don't want you to do three. I mean, if you want to go ahead and try 321, 322, I'm going to do those. We'll do those tomorrow. But just stop at page 320. Stop at page 320. Okay. And... Um, that's your homework for tonight. It's all review at this point till the test. <laughs>